Hey everyone, Crazy Ed here, and in this video I'm going to talk about the Atlas and the Atlas of Worlds. We've had a few days to look at a, the big map, the big picture, we've got the names, we can calculate the tiers of a lot of these maps, so we really know what we're going to deal with for the most part uh, going forward. So I want to talk a little bit about strategy in this video, and then uh, some of my thoughts on how Atlas of Worlds is going to play out, uh, taking into account the last couple leagues we've had, and, you know, just kind of where GGG, uh, I see them going in the future. But we'll get to that later. Let's go ahead and start with the Atlas. Now, I've got the map pulled up, and I'm going to start with something that I, uh, I heard Project PT say on the not try hard podcast which is the the maps are now in a bell curve as far as the tiers go before they were in kind of like a a skyscraper shape right we had before we had seven tier one seven tier twos i think seven tier threes and seven tier fours then it went down to six and eventually you know by the time you got up to your tier 14s there were only four and tier 15s there was only three right now we know that there's going to be four tier 16s and i think four tier 15s um and there's also four tier ones, and I think five tier twos, and either f and maybe five tier threes. Um, and then once you get up to I think tier six, there's like eleven of those. So knowing those that tier level, we can kind of plan how we're going to play. Now, currently, when I start a league or you know even in standard, I I do pick up every map, you know. And I use my tier 1s, 2s, and 3s for chisel recipes. I use tier uh, 4 plus, and I will basically combine usually, almost always, uh, tier 8s, except for canyons and sometimes dark forests, um, into the next tier. I sell my tier 9s and 10s that I don't need, uh, sometimes tier 11s, and I, I run red maps. Now, we know that for each map you unlock in the Atlas, it's going to give you 1% increased uh, map drop rate. But what I was wondering looking at the map and noticing all the tiers and the way it's kind of laid out, I wonder if you can get to all four bosses only unlocking maybe one tier one, one tier two, one tier three, one to two tier fours, and one to two tier fives, and then the entire rest of your pool is tier sixes. Now, there's probably going to be an achievement where you unlock the entire atlas. Fair enough. And maybe I'll do that. But, in the meantime, if you're combining up your lower tier maps and you're trying to get a consistently high map pool, then maybe it's in your best interest to leave out running as many of the lower tier maps as you can. Now you're only going to lose out about 10 to 15 total experience if you can really min-max min -max the Atlas this way. But your the starting tier, uh, your starting pool is for the most part going to be all tier 6 pluses. So any map that you drop is going to be that good tier. And you know I've played with guys who will leave anything below a tier 9 on the ground. They don't care about combining maps, but you know if you're trying to run solo a little bit, or you're you know you're just magic finding, trying to increase your pool, then and you have a spare stash tab or two for them. Hey, combine them up, and this would really help with that. Um, so the way you, I think the best way to do this is actually there's a few linchpin nodes or linchpins maps. This mesa is one of them because if you can get uh, if you could start at the tunnel, you can go tier 2 and you will unlock the abandoned cavern tier 3 and channel whatever this tier 4 is here. It's going to be a new one. You would have two tier 3s, one tier 4, a tier 5, and then you could do, as long as you didn't run the mesa, you could skip your tier 5s, which is entirely doable. Channel is an amazing map already at tier 2. You can run a couple of tier 6s and avoid all of this. Now, I say avoid all of this. Canyon's a good map to run, but you, when you run Canyon, you then unlock another tier 5 that you don't necessarily need. 
when if you go this way past cells, and cells it does have an annoying layout, but hey, this is for the greater good, right? Um, run cells, then you can make your way up to arachnid nest and then overgrown shrine, and you still get a dry woods, which is a fairly easy layout, and the boss isn't that bad. You can go to tier 8, cross all the way over here, and you will need to get village ruin, and then you can go wharf, and you should be able to traverse this entire thing, picking up only that one extra dry peninsula, and then mud geyser for a spider forest, which is a tier 6, and then that's the last, that's it, because you can make your way all the way around to all four bosses using only those. So you would have a final pool of one tier one, tier two, two tier threes, one of which is channel, which is probably, I think, one of the better ones. Abandoned Caverns crap. Uh, I don't know what this is, but it's probably not as good as channel. Veil Pyramid, I mean, it's got an easy boss, but it's the layout can be, you know, a little bit annoying. Um, a sewer, which is the same as a waste pool, if I remember. And then Arid Lake, which is a good tier 3, but you also open up the Grotto map. Uh, and then you have to do Dungeon and Dunes, which Dunes isn't bad, but then you're opening up Villa. So by running through the desert is your first map, then you're opening up one, two extra maps that you don't need. Well, I guess that's the same as the other one. You can then run to Strand and go all the way over and do the same layout, only hitting tier 6s. So you could run Desert, which has, unless they don't, you know, redo the boss, that'd be a little bit bad. This route's really interesting because you get a 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you get 1, 2, 5s three fives so you get three fives but then you're we don't know if the academy is a four or a five and this way we have one two three four five hmm two or this extra tier two or tier three as well so you pick up a bonus tier three and you're picking up phantasmagoria for an extra low tier and then you'd probably cut over this way so I think running Jungle Valley is your first one. If you're going to go this tactic, would be probably be out of the question. So that's how I plan to approach the Atlas. That is, of course, unless they just let you buy maps from other players and then skip to wherever on the Atlas, in which case I can probably just avoid all those lower tier maps altogether, as can you guys. So now that we've talked about the Atlas, navigating it, and uh, some of the options that go along with that, I want to talk about the Shaper fight and the four fights leading up to the Shaper. Now we've already had one of these teased, the Hydra fight uh, that looks to be like an archer, and it's a water-based fight. Uh, the thing that we've seen is that the fight gets harder as it goes on. Now, this actually worries me a little bit, um, and I can dig deeper into that for a few reasons, and we saw a little bit of the Minotaur fight as well, to be fair. But the thing I noticed about most of these fights is they share something in common with both Atziri and the Uber Azaro encounter, and that's that the longer you let the fight go on, the more dangerous it is. And the Hydra fight, um, Ziggy teased that the the lower his, the Hydra's health gets, the faster the, the frost bolts come out of the side. So that's a more dangerous encounter. Then you've also got, in the Minotaur fight, the longer the fight goes on, the more likely you are to misstep, maybe get shocked by the area of effect that he showed, and you're more likely to get you know hit by the falling rocks. So the longer these fights go on, the more dangerous they become, and the, the harder it's going to be for you to deal with the mechanics. Both of those fights then play into the Poison Miner Trapper type of build then, where you rush to the boss fight and then you the goal is to finish the fight as fast as possible. 
it doesn't look like there are too many side mobs with the in those two encounters yet maybe something's going to change for the phoenix and the chimera fights we don't quite know yet but for those two fights in particular it looks like you want to finish them so the the poison miner this is something that it's going to be really good at now you can argue that you have to go through the maps to get to them well that's true and the advantage that the poison miner builds have over a normal build in say the uber lab or in uber at ziri you're there's no modifiers on the map right there's no mobs do 90% extra damage is lightning. Mobs have extra resistance. Mo you know, you have enfeeble. You can run straight through them. Well, we know that the four boss encounters leading up to the Shaper fight, the Hydra Chimera, the Minotaur, and the Phoenix all drop a key. That sounds really similar to both Uber and Ziri and not necessarily the Uber Lab, but, you know, for like every other fight so you you skip over the maps you have to get to the tier 16 maps to get the keys but once you beat the boss of the tier 16 map they're guaranteed to drop one of their keys cool there's nothing stopping those builds from running those tier 16 maps with say you know they alt elemental equilibrium on them for 10 percent pack size and then that's all they need that doesn't really affect you when you're a blade fall miner so you get some free pack size, you spend a few alts, and you get a guaranteed key drop. Now, those builds could then farm tier 16 maps just for the keys and sell the keys. That might be profitable enough, but they're, what they're probably going to end up doing is running the Shaper fight. Now, if you, I don't know how the Shaper fight's going to look, but unless you're fighting all four bosses at the same time, four or five, which is something that those Poison Miner builds are not good at, then it might be one more thing where, hey, I'll just run Uber at Ziri until I can afford, you know, a couple of Shaper Fight sets, and then I'll go run the Shaper Fight. That's awesome. Or they'll run their Tier 60 maps. Now, that might be one way that they approach it. The other way is, you know, you could always get run the map, roll really insanely hard, and have a build like an Assassin... Um, poisoner run in with you or some earthquake juggernaut that basically can't die to hardly anything um, run you to the boss then the poison miner completes the boss and piggybacking is something that you know if it happens it happens it kind of happens in groups anyway what I'm what concerns me most about that poison miner mechanic though is in a way it's similar to cast on crit and that GGG is forced to balance everything around it. Now, let me explain. With Cast on Crit, any skill gem they develop, whether it's an attack or a spell, has to be balanced on how does this look when you s it's supported by Cast on Critical Strike. For a spell, it's if this spell procs 20 times a second, what happens? Does it fill too many niches? Is it better than the mechanics that already exist? You know, and with an attack is, does it does it proc more than barrage? You know, will it is it more consistent? Is the weapon type, whatever, all that needs to be compared to cast on critical strike. And cast on critical strike is quote unquote getting some love according to Chris in 2.4. Blade miners the exact same in that they're ba they need to balance their content against it, right? If and Project PT brought this up. I know I've mentioned him earlier and in my last video some, but he said. If the boss fight is too hard, then it's just one more thing that that poison miner does. And other builds kind of, you know, they can do it, but maybe not as good, not as efficiently. And if the content is too hard, then the miner, it's just one less thing that it does. Now, what that leads to is a divergence of content in the long run if they keep going down this path, right? There are certain things that, only, that the miner is really good at. And there are certain things that every other build is good at, like other builds can farm maps where miners just tend to not care um, for the most part. It's not that they can't run them, they're just not as fast and efficient because of the way their build is designed. That's all I had to say about that. Um, 
I may or may not, if they don't announce anything different, I'm doing some theory crafting with some different type of minor stuff. Um, I will make a build guide for that if it turns out to be fruitful, and I'll let you guys know. If you guys like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I love a good discussion, and I will see you all out in Rayclast.